Hello everyone, it's Diana Minerva. I hope you're all having a wonderful week. And today I'm going to share a make with you for some jeans. It's the Morgan Jeans by Closet Co. They are a slim leg, mid-rise jean with a button fly. And what we're going to be using today is this Minerva Co Range Soft Wash Denim in medium blue. Now the fabric does come in five colours should you wish to choose something different. It's got a lovely soft feel to it. Now before we get started, you want to check the sizing on the back of your packet. Do this with a tape measure, don't just go for your standard dress size. And when we've done that, we're ready to go and cut our pattern pieces. So let's go and do that together now. So here we have our pattern pieces. So here is the front leg and you're going to cut two pieces. This is a straight grain. You can lengthen or shorten at the broken lines. Make a note of your markings. And also at the bottom of the leg, here is the line for the crop version. Here we have the back leg. Again, you're going to cut two pieces. Make a note of your pocket markings. Lengthen or shorten at the broken line. Make a note of the rest of your markings. And again, check your length. Do you want the full length version or the crop leg version? Here we have our pocket facing. You're going to cut two of fabric. This is a straight grain, note your markings. Here is the yoke. Again, cut two of fabric. The straight grain is this way. Now the waistband, you're going to cut two on the fold in fabric. Now what you could do is do one in fabric and one in lining if you wish. I've done two in fabric. The fold line is here. Make a note of your markings and interfacing this is optional so that's up to you. Here we have the pocket lining. You're going to cut two of lining. This is a straight grain. Note your markings. And the back pocket, again, you're going to cut two pieces in fabric. Here we have our belt loops. We're going to cut one in fabric. The button fly shield. You're going to cut one in fabric and one in interfacing. Straight grain is this way. Here we have the button fly placket. You're going to cut one of fabric and one of interfacing. Make a note of the button markings here, or button hole markings. Here is the coin pocket, you're going to cut one in fabric. This is the waistband patch, now this is up to you, this is optional, and you're going to cut one of those in leather if you wish, or faux leather. And then here, we have the top stitching fly guide, so you don't need to cut this in fabric, we just save this for when we're doing our top stitching. Now we're ready to begin making our jeans. So first of all, you want to wind half of your thread onto your machine spool and check your needle is sharp. Now we're going to be using two needles today. We're going to be using a jeans needle and a top stitching needle. Now you need your top stitching needle on first of all because we're going to be preparing our pockets. So we want regular thread underneath and then your top stitching thread on top. Thread up your needle, we're going to take our pocket pieces, so these are our back pockets, and we're going to press down the top. Now this wants to be pressed down 20 millimetres or 2 centimetres, and then when you've done that, turn under the raw edge on the inside also and press under that. When that's nice and flat, we're going to do two rows of top stitching. So the first one wants to be 3 millimetres away from the seam that you just created and then the next one six millimetres away from that. Let's do that first of all. Now I find it's best as well as pressing it under your raw edge if you pin it like this so that it's secure before you begin top stitching. So we're going to top stitch three millimetres away from the edge there and then six millimetres away from that. Just be careful of your pins as you go. Just slow down as you come over. Now you're also going to do these two lines of top stitching on your coin pocket. So again, press back two centimeters at the top edge then fold under that raw edge so it comes to meet the top like this, pin it in place and now we're going to top stitch it again. 
at this point we're going to press back the remainder of our seams. You could edge finish them at this point if you wish or overlock them before pressing them back. Now press back the remaining edges of your pockets like this. So it's 1.3. If you've got any bits that are poking up like this you may want to trim them off at an angle and set those aside. With your coin pocket here just leave the raw edge at the bottom flat for now and just press in these two side edges. We're then going to take our belt loop piece and we're going to finish one long edge so either zigzag or overlock. When we've done that we're going to fold it into thirds like this and press it down then stitch with two rows of top stitching. So let's edge finish it first of all. So here we see it's pressed into thirds. So the raw edge to the inside and then the overlocked edge over it like this. Turn it over, going to top stitch down each edge. Now you're going to pin the coin pocket to the right pocket facing like this. So we have our markings here and here in chalk. This lines up at the bottom, so pin that in place. Now we're going to stitch down each side with two rows of top stitching. Now with wrong sides facing, you're going to sew each pocket facing to the lining like this. You're going to sew around all the edges, so along the top, down the side and around this curve edge on both. Next you're going to sew your pocket lining to your jeans. So the side with your pocket facing should be face downwards. This is the right side of the jeans. We're going to sew around this curve here, snip into it, then flip it to the wrong side and give it a press. Do take care when you're clipping into it that you don't snip your stitches. Now top stitch a double row along this curved pocket seam. Now fold the pocket lining in half like this. Press and you're now going to stitch and finish the bottom edge of the pocket. So on the right side it looks like this. So I'm going to stitch mine first of all and then overlock the bottom. Now we're going to place our two front legs together like this. Now on the left leg you want to overlock around the fly extension just here. Only do that on the left leg. Then with both pieces together like this we're going to draw a line from the notch here down to this circle. Pin it in position. We're going to stitch with a long straight stitch down to the circle. Back tack. Change to a small stitch and then continue round your crotch here. Now it looked like this. Now you want to snip in towards that circle, not too close to it though. Then we're going to edge finish, either zigzag or overlock this crotch area here. Then we're going to press open this fly extension. Now turn your trousers or jeans over to the right side and you're going to sew a single line of top stitching on the left leg down this side of the seam, three millimetres away from the seam. You want to make sure that you're catching the fly extension and the crotch seam at the bottom when you do this. Interface the button fly shield and the button fly placket. Then you're going to take the placket, you're going to fold it in half, so wrong sides facing and we're going to overlock 
around this outside raw edge. You could also zigzag finish that if you wish. Now you're going to create your buttonholes in the places marked and you want to make sure that they start six millimeters away from this folded edge on this side. Now lay your button placket on the left side. So here's your left fly extension. We're laying it on top, but it wants to be just three millimeters inset from the center seam here. Pin it at the top and then we're just going to baste it here to keep it in position. Now you're going to use your top stitching guide to mark on your chalk line for your top stitching. Now I've also tacked a few stitches just to keep the placket in place. You can pin it in place, but as we're top stitching, I've just found this makes it easier rather than having pins get in the way. So I've just put a few tacking stitches through mine. So mark it on and now we're going to top stitch two rows. Take your time with this. So one row and then six millimetres inside that we're going to do another row. Now you're going to sew your fly shield. So fold it in half with right sides facing like this and we're going to sew along the short angled edge here. So with your seam allowance 1.6 When you've done that you can snip it to one centimetre and then turn it to the right side and press. Now turn your jeans to the wrong side and you're going to trim off 2.5 centimetres of the right fly extension. So you may find it's best if you measure it and then draw a line and we're going to trim this off here. Now line up that fly shield with the raw edge that you've just snipped off so it looks like this. Pin it in position we're now going to stitch that in place with a one centimetre seam. Now press your fly shield flat and we're going to top stitch three millimetres away from the edge here. All the way down just to keep everything in place and keep it neat. Now we need to keep everything together so from the right side on the top we're going to need to do some bar stitching or some bar tags. So you may want to put a few pins in place to keep it lined up before you do this. I'm going to do this on this side, the straight side here. You can change to a small zigzag stitch. Now we're going to do another line of top stitching down the remainder of your crotch here at the side of the other line. Now you're going to pin your yoke to your back trouser legs like this, matching the notches. We're going to stitch that in place with a 1.6 centimetre seam allowance. Now you can either overlock this off at this point or finish with a flat fell seam. So I'm going to do a flat fell seam at this point on mine. So the part that goes down to the leg, this part of the seam, you're going to trim it away to about six millimeters. So trim away the excess of that seam. And then this top part, you're going to turn it under like this and we'll pin it in place and that gives you a nice flat finish on the inside. So do that all the way along and give it a press before we turn to the right side to do our top stitching. Now that we've top stitched our yoke in place we're going to position our pockets so lay them on in the places indicated with your chalk marks Pin it in position and now we're going to do two lines of top stitching all the way around the outer edge. Now with both back pockets sewn in place, align both your back legs with right sides facing and you're going to sew that back centre seam. Now press your seam towards your left leg and again down the centre back you're going to do two lines of top stitching. Now you're going to line up your front and your back and we're going to stitch the inside leg seam. So you want to make sure that your lines match up here that you've stitched, your top stitching lines. And also take care, you may need to pull on it a little just 
between the thigh here and the crotch to make sure that they line up. So pin it in position first of all. Also, I would back tack as you go across the crotch here just to reinforce it a little. I'm going to stitch all the way around with a 1.6 centimetre seam allowance. Now edge finish your seam, press the seam to the back leg and now you're going to top stitch the seam to the back leg all the way along that inside leg. Do this three millimetres away from the edge. Now you're going to pin your outside leg front to back. Make sure that you line up any notches and then stitch this in place. Again, you're going to press your seam to the back leg. Then we're going to change to our top stitching thread. We're going to sew a line of top stitching down to the bottom of the pocket here. Now you're going to sew your waistband and waistband facing together at the upper curved seam. Now when you've stitched your two pieces of waistband together, you're going to press under the seam allowance on your facing side. So you may have used lining fabric to face your waistband or you may have used two pieces of denim as I have. So one has interfacing on it and one doesn't. So you want to turn back the seam allowance on the piece that you are using for your facing. So that's the piece that will go to the inside of the jeans. Now when you're pinning your waistband to your jeans you want to make sure that you match up the centre back. So match up your notch, your central notch on your waistband with your centre back. The notches here at the side seams and also the notches to the front. Pin it in place all the way around and we're now going to stitch this in place. Now you're going to turn your waistband back to the inside like this. Make sure that the folded edge that you turned under the seam allowance on the inside piece, the facing piece, is turned back. And we're going to sew up the short edges of the waistband here so it's in line with the fly. Check it on each side and make sure that it's level. You want it to be even so you might want to measure it with your ruler as well. Try it against each other, make sure that they're going to line up and be exactly the same width and sew up each side. Now how much you'll have here depends on how much you needed for your hem allowance. It did say in the pattern that the uh, waistband was cut a little bigger to allow a little extra. Cut away the excess and also across the corner at the top and then turn it through. Now on the inside you can pin your waistband all the way around well, what I've chosen to do is I've tacked it down with some stitches I just find this is easier because we're going to be top stitching now so from the right side we're going to top stitch all the way around the waistband along the top down these short edges and along the point here where it meets the jeans now I'm going to start my top stitching at the centre back here because it's going to be hidden the join by a belt loop in a moment so that's where I'm starting mine. Do it three millimetres away from the edge. Now you're going to cut five belt loops from the belt loop strip that you prepared earlier and each should be roughly nine centimetres long. Then you're going to line them up just inside the front pocket top stitching here and here. And then the centre back, one here, and then one either side just above in line with your back pockets here and here. When you've done that we're going to stitch them in place. Be careful at this point because it is very thick, you may wish to hammer it down a little. Take your time, walk over it with your machine as you top stitch with your top stitch thread. You may also wish to go through it with a few hand stitches for extra security because some machines may not cooperate with sewing through this many layers of this thickness. So do soften it first and take your time when you do this. Now if you're adding a patch it should sit to the back right leg just to the left of the belt loop here. Place it in position and stitch it all the way around. You may wish to use fabric glue so that you don't get needle marks or pin marks in your patch. 
this is optional you don't need to add this if you don't want to now you need to make your remaining buttonhole at the top here then we're going to insert our jeans buttons now what we need to do is we need to line these up with our buttonholes on this side so if you place it on top like this and mark it through the buttonhole with a chalk but you do need to make sure that your button is going to end up six millimeters away from this top stitched edge so towards the right rather than in the center because this will make sure that this doesn't gape open when it's closed so six millimeters away from this edge mark it in line with your buttonhole then with an awl you're going to make a hole where your buttonhole will go or you could use a nail and a hammer and from the back you're going to push through this little tack through the hole and then the button goes on top of that you need to cover it with some cloth so it doesn't get damaged and you hit it firmly with a hammer make sure that it is straight and not wonky otherwise it will bend like this and go on at an angle so let's line those up and insert those now now you can also add rivets to your jeans at this point so these are usually added at the hip point here at the outside of the back pocket and then also at either side of the coin pocket here and here if you are adding these you need to make a hole with an awl you push through the nub and then you hammer the top in place you need to protect it with some cardboard if you're going to be using these as well now if you're not using rivets what you can do at the key points where there's extra stress you can add some bar tacks here here and here and also at the back pocket if you wish do this by making a small zigzag stitch shortening your stitch length and going over it a few times now we're going to hem the bottom of our jeans so we want to press it under one centimeter and then when you've done this press it under 1.2 centimeters now just to be sure try on your garment and check that it's the right length for you we're now going to hem it in position so here are the finished jeans they're a good fit. This, this pair isn't for me, but it is made to a, a UK size 8, so I've tried them on just to show. And they fit well. They're a good fit at the waist and round the hips. I've made them to the length specified, which is just a touch long on me, so if I was making them for me, I would have to take these up a little. But they can be worn turned up in the image on the cover as well. So as you can see, they fit here, and then they are looser towards the bottom because they are a straight leg some fly well i hope you've enjoyed sewing along with me please let us know if you've made this pattern before and remember to include any photographs in the comments we always love to see what you've been making as i said these days did come out a little long on me i'm only five foot four but as you can see in the cover design She's wearing them turned up so you could make them slightly longer if you're wearing a high heeled shoe and then if you're wearing a flat shoe you could style them by turning them up like this. If you're not doing either of those things remember to check before you hem so you get the length right. Now remember to follow Minerva to get more video content like this every week and of course take a look at the Minerva Craft Club to get 10% off all your orders for a whole year. I hope to be back soon with another sew along for you. But thank you so much for watching today. Bye for now.